Dykes and he's been he's been great. Um, so we'll see what happens in the playoff. But they did uh, fantastic work as well. Uh, I will say, uh, obviously Alabama. I yeah, obvious. Alabama did great. Miami did great. Um, and we'll see if en- just enough players is going to be uh, enough to get Miami over the hump. They have a great staff, which I think is under talked about with Mario Cristobal, where it's like Josh Gaddis is the OC. Uh, they got the um, uh, Kevin Steele's DC, who's always had success wherever he's gone. And then, um, I mean, they took your DB coach this past year, right? Uh, the guy from West Virginia. Uh, what's his name? Uh, he was a really good recruiter in that regard, who y'all had for um, a year. <clears throat> what is his name? I'm blank. Jamel Adai? Yes. So um, I still tend to think that um, they're going to be okay. Uh, Tennessee deserves kudos finishing number 10 what was one of the things matt green uh about the hypo hire do you remember one of the narratives at the time what was that it's like oh great offense can he recruit like he's never recruited at this level he was at ucf um he's never been at a power five we'll see how he recruits that's the main thing uh if you want to compete like the offense and scheme can be fun in year one like you caught a lot of people by surprise but what happens when those Jeremy Pruitt players leave the building because Pruitt recruited. <laughs> like Pruitt, uh, did, he didn't show up on game day, but he was still uh, he was still recruiting at a high level. And you wonder like what what happens if uh, he can't hold up on that regard. Top ten class, Nico, um, who's already in the building, uh, really great. Um, a bunch of defensive talent: David Hobbs, uh, John Slaughter, Christian Conyer. Um, Jeremiah T. Lander, Aaron Carter looks like he's going to start right away. But I love the defensive focus that Heupel put on this class. So it shows me that he is absolutely prioritizing uh, the need for bodies on that side of the ball and to get better and more athletic there. And then Nathan Leacock, I think, is going to be a superstar uh, at the wideout spot in this game. Uh, they take Deshaun Bishop, who has just put up bonkers numbers uh, here in East Tennessee at Carnes uh, at the, the last little bit. But they're loaded... Um, there, Cam Selden looks like he's the next Debo Samuel, Cordero Patterson mix, so he's going to be a really good player who I think sees the field early. Um, but, you know, I think Tennessee being in the top 10, my whole thing was like, can Hypo stay in the blue chip ratio? If he can do that, I'm good to go. And that's where they're at. They're not, gonna, I don't think they're ever going to recruit at the level uh, Georgia and Bama are right now. Like those two just are on a different playing sphere. Um, that everybody else and that's just how it is I, I but by and large you just want to be in the blue chip ratio is the main thing well and that's what i was gonna say is i mean this is obviously a good class but is like is this a class that's going to change the trajectory of tennessee's program like i think defensively consi- yes because if you look at like just kind of consistently through the years of the rankings it's like if you're if you're consistently signing like the Fifth, fourth, fifth, sixth best class in the SEC. Like, I don't know that that's actually going to, you know, lead to to better things. Like, I mean, this is kind of like no disrespect here, but like this is kind of like the classes that like one of the classes that Dan Mullen was like made fun of at Florida, like signing the tenth to twelfth ranked class. Like, what is it, two seventy seven overall? It's like Florida and A and M are, are are pretty close to that, but. Like, we talk about Oklahoma and Texas are just about to join the SEC. It's like they're both ahead of that. So if you want to include Oklahoma and Texas, now this is what, the, the sixth ranked class in the SEC? It's like, it's good, but like, I wonder, like, I feel like this is kind of a Mark Richt class. Like, this is, this is like what Mark Richt would consistently sign the, the you know, and the good years were like the fifth or sixth ranked, but there's a lot of 10th, 11th ranked classes, and it, it, It'd be the fourth or fifth and the best in the SEC, and you'd end up being the fourth or fifth best team in the SEC pretty pretty consistently. So I, I do wonder because with such a good second year on the field and like such a such a sexy second year, like they were just such an exciting team. Like I'm not I'm not saying it's a disappointing class, but you almost want to like maybe maybe you get a top five class this year, like a, a, an early bump, you know, for your. For your recruiting class so I but mean, look you got the five-star quarterback like that's that's huge obviously but go ahead well i mean i guess my thing is like well oregon you should probably beat oregon but oregon obviously i mean they 
they have more success. Obvi- um, I think... Oregon doesn't really bother me. I think you want to be ahead of Notre Dame uh, at this point, but they're by and large pretty close, 9 and 10. That's negligible. But you look up Ohio State, LSU, Miami when they have the money, and just people want it. Miami has the USC thing, right? Where kids, a lot of South Florida kids uh, in this league, and a lot of kids want to play at Miami. Miami is a cool school in the South, great weather. Um, they want a reason to go there when they're up and they're doing what they're doing, Tennessee should not be expected to beat the Miamis, the Georgias, the Bamas of the world right now consistently. Like I've always said what Tennessee should try and do football wise is you just kind of want to be Auburn where you maintain that 10 to 12. Maybe you have a blip in that top five class every now and then. And then you are just, you have that special. I don't think year anyone wants right to be Auburn. I don't think Auburn fans want to be Auburn. I mean, they've been in the national title <laughs> twice in a little over a decade. I mean, that's kind of where you want to be. It's it's hard enough to do that, but I think it's been almost a decade since that happened, though, right? Yeah, but I mean, they've had some bad hires. Like that's been part of it. Is um, they've gone down and some. I, I think there's a lot of comparisons between how Auburn and Tennessee operate, actually. Um, but I, I don't know. I think this class you could have. Yeah, I think there was momentum early. Like if Francis Malagoa, who was uh, deep in the hunt for Tennessee, like here's the difference between this class being a top five and not. Carnell Tate, they got down to the final two with Ohio State. And then he goes Ohio State, probably the best receiver in this class. If you hit him and then you hit on um, uh, Francis Malagoa as well, then you're looking at the top five classes, what I'm guessing. But they, they got in the final <laughs> two for those two schools and they lost to Miami and Ohio State, and I'm just like, I don't know. Well, and that's think- fair. If like, also like, this is such a subjective kind of like. I have to remind people of like these numerical scores aren't real, you know. Mm-hmm. So Al- Tennessee having two seventy seven point three, and Oregon having two eighty one point seven. It's like by this metric, it's pretty close to being the seventh ranked yeah. class in the in the country, and and LSU there at two eighty six. So it's it's not a, a huge gap um, for Tennessee. To be there, I just I look at them. I'm I look at it and I'm like, how much better is this than like a Butch Jones class and like a Jeremy Pruitt class of like kind of that borderline top ten that you're still the fifth or sixth best in the SEC and you don't and you know Josh Heupel might just be such a superior coach to those others that he can be the fifth and sixth best talent in the SEC and still get a top two or three team in the SEC. Mm. I just don't know if you can win the SEC without getting at least like those those close to like 300 uh composite ranked classes but with i mean the sec i mean with the 12 team playoff that doesn't matter as much anymore like that's the whole- fair and the, and the portal changes things too i think mm-hmm. you got to be active in the portal and kind of you know sure up some weaknesses where you can it's the the, the composite talent ranking isn't everything you know it, it it is it is an inexact science but um but it does matter stars matter they say yeah. it all the time stars do matter and there's a reason that um and this is like goes back to bama they're gonna be all right like they're gonna maybe this might be their best class of all time like people who are like oh i don't know about bama they're pretty shaky it's like i think bama's fine i think they're gonna be okay uh, i think bama's and gonna be fine. numerically like in the actual score it's their best of all time I'm saying it's in the. It was in the running. Did it end up being? Okay, I think no? it's ahead of that 2017 class. Yeah. And like, so that was at 323. This one's at 326 right now. And that 2017 class, mm. they legit hit on like the top like 12 players in the class. Like it's Najee Harris, Alex Weatherwood, Dylan Moses, Jerry Judy, LeBron Ray, Tua, Jedrick Willis, or Jedrick Wills, Xavier McKinney, Devonte Smith, Henry Ruggs, like. It's like the top like ten dudes in the class were just all like first and second round picks, like just, just absurd. Um, some p- specific players, or let's do some losers. I don't think there were that many losers to me when I was looking at it. Like, <laughs> this is gonna sound disrespectful, and I don't mean it to be disrespectful. <laughs>